was born in Washington, D.C., and I've lived in a lot of different places around the world. I grew up in Spain and Colombia, South America, and different places around the U.S. And all those different experiences helped to give me different perspectives on how different people live. And I learned that what was considered exotic in one place was normal in another. And so I learned to see things from a different perspective and not take for granted what I have. Uh, my grandfather was a Trump Lloyd painter. He painted still lifes and landscapes. And he encouraged me to make art. But I really didn't uh, draw very much because uh, his drawings were so good that my drawings always fell short. So instead I would work in cardboard and my dad's empty cigarette boxes and I built sculptures out of them. Um, what else about myself? I speak English, Spanish, and Italian. And I came to ceramics from a sculpture background, so even though I've been doing ceramics for a long time, I spent some time in Italy carving marble. Um, I've worked in steel and uh, bronze recently, and a lot of different materials, jewelry and metalsmithing. But ceramics holds my passion. Um, ceramics is so diverse between low fire and high fire. Uh, glaze chemistry that I knew that in a career in ceramics I would never get bored. So uh, tell us about the process and how do you uh, how do you start creating this beautiful work that you do? Well, um, I guess ideas come to me in little tiny snippets. Um, when I get a seed of an idea, I have to develop it. So I usually sit with it for a while, and I do many sketches and research, and as I begin working, it evolves. I never work on one piece at a time. I'm usually working on uh, two to four pieces at once. Um, and they're at different stages of evolution. And when those ideas come to me, um, it, you know how it is sometimes when somebody mentions something that you haven't heard before, and then all of a sudden you start hearing it? So when I have a question about one of my art pieces, um, the solutions just uh, come to me just by uh, interacting with different things in my life and also by looking and researching. So where do you work? Where's your studio at? I have a studio at home uh, where I do most of my work and my kids come up and talk to me in my studio and my wife is my harshest critic. And uh, she says, oh, that line work. It's like, you gotta fix that line work. Um, and I have a studio at school too. And um, I mostly throw on the wheel, uh, hand build, but I also sometimes make work that's combining other materials, uh, steel with ceramics. And I had a, uh, a show some years ago where I most of the work was mixed media. So. So being a full-time professor, how do you make time and uh, devote yourself into making your art? I mean, where does that come from? Where, where can you, how do you manage that? It's really hard to make time. I think that's one of the biggest challenges being an artist is finding the time to make the work. Um, now that my kids are older, they're uh, 12 and 14, I have a little bit more free studio time, but um, for a period of time there, my studio time was like from six o'clock at night until two in the morning, and then from like six o'clock in the morning until eight or nine. So just squeezing it in whenever I can. So can you talk about the experience working in the San Antonio art community? Uh, can you speak about a particular experience uh, collaborating with other artists? Um, I guess um, I have a very singular vision of my work that I don't want to compromise it with other people. I do some uh, collaborative work with my students. Every year there's a ceramic symposium in South Texas. And in the summertime, I, we work on a collaborative piece that then I drive down there uh, with them. And we build a large sculpture together. And we build it together all the way from the design until the finished product. Uh, but other things that I do, I collaborate with uh, different entities within the university. I've collaborated with anthropology. And they were doing some tests uh, looking at the residue 
uh, protein residues left over in ceramic shards. And then they wanted me to find, make a, cre a clay body that was similar to the clay body of the indigenous people of that area and then uh, fire it. And then they would cook food in it and then compare those mineral traces in the shards that they made compared to the ones that they found. Um, I'm also doing right now, I'm working with the LCATS program where they're testing a simulation of lunar soil and seeing how they could uh, create a material that they could use to build things either on the moon or on Mars and firing those lunar regoliths to uh, a point that becomes some material that they can